Good day everyone, we are the group 5 and today we are going to discuss about the global migration. Now here are the objectives. First is to identify the reason for the migration of people. Second is to explain why states regulate migration. And third is to discuss the effects for global migration and the economic well-being of states. Now, what is migration? Migration is defined as movement from one place to another in search for better opportunities to settle. When people move from one place to another, the place they move from is called the place of origin and the place they move to is called the place of destination. Example, you move from PH to US. You are now called an immigrant or a migrant. The, vi the difference between the two is migrant is just temporary while an immigrant is kind of permanent. There are two types of migration, interna internal migration and international migration. These will be discussed by Ms. Ritazo. Good day, I am Chalisa Maya Ritazo and I am going to report about two types of migration, the internal migration and the international migration. So internal migration, it refers to a change of residence between national boundaries, such as between states, provinces, cities, or municipalities. An internal migrant is someone who moves to a different administrative territory and only within the country. So within the country, Lanka, pwede mag change of residency sa internal migration. So, for example, si Juan from Mindanao, nagbalin siya puyo to Luzon. So, kay naraman siya, sa isa raman siya ka-country, nag-transfer, nagbalhin. So, he is an internal migrant. And then, international migration, it is refers to a change of residence over national boundaries. It means, dili siya sa isa lang ka-country. So, an international immigrant is someone who moves to a different country. For example, si Maria from Philippines nagbalin siya to USA and because national and because over national boundaries naman siya so si Maria is an international immigrant and then international migration are broken down into five groups the immigrants the illegal immigrants the temporary immigrants the petitioned families and the refugees and these five will be going to discuss by the next reporters that's all thank you Hi, my name is Andrea Jane Pizarin, the field reporter of this presentation. Before we go to our topic, let's review the international migration that Ms. Rita Sojalisa discussed. According to her, international migration in which people cross borders of the country to another, it, to another. It has five types or can be further broken down into five groups and these are immigrants, temporary migrants, illegal migrants, migrants whose families of petition them to move to destination country, and lastly, the refugees, also known as asylum seekers. For my report, I will only discuss the first and second type of international migration, which are immigrants and temporary migrants. First, let's start with a question. What is immigrants? Immigrants is a person who comes to live permanently in a foreign country. Immigration, it is a process through which individuals become permanent residents or citizens of another country. Historically, the process of immigration has been a great social, economic, and cultural benefit to states. The immigration experience is a long and varied and has in many cases resulted in the development of multicultural societies. Many modern states are characterized by a wide variety of cultures and ethnicities that have derived from previous periods of immigration. Immigration is um, therefore closely related to citizenship and the social and political rights to which citizens of states are entitled. States maintain control of their borders and therefore are able to monitor and determine the number of immigrants 
who are able to remain permanently. This can vary across states and in some areas borders are more open than in others. Immigrant is more than siya, international movement of people to destination country which dili sila natives or where they do not possess citizenship in order to settle as permanent residents or naturalized citizens. Immigrants ginatawag sa na sila or referred to as foreign-born residents. They moved to a new country for nari mga several reasons nila, including searching for economic prosperity, job opportunities, family unification, reunion, retirement, and better access to resources. Who is called an immigrant? Simply put, an immigrant is a person living in a country other than that of his or her birth no matter if that person has taken the citizenship of the destination country, served it in its military, married a native, or some other status, he or she will forever be an international migrant. Example, a woman who moves from Mexico to the United States. Uh, it is an example of immigrant because Immigrant is defined as someone who moves to a new country. Um, last question, which country has the most immigrants? It is the United States. Because the United States is um, a home to a largest number of immigrants over 15 million, which shall make up 15% of the country population. Since 1990, the proportion of immigrants in the country has continued to rise until now. I researched in internet, nag-research ko sa internet, and nag-research ko sa mga highest number of immigrants, and only akong nakita. Top 10 countries with the highest number of foreign-born residents or immigrants. United Nations 2020. Uh, first top one is United States, second Germany, then Saudi Arabia, Russia, United Kingdom, United, United Arab Emirates, France, Canada, Australia, and lastly Spain. Let's move to second type of international migration which is the temporary migrants so what is temporary migrants a temporary migration is a migration to a country that is not intended to be permanent for a specified and limited period of time and usually undertaken for a specific purpose unlike immigration <coughs> What do you call a temporary immigrant? It is non-immigrant status. This status is for people who enter the U.S. on a temporary basis, whether for tourism, business, temporary work, or study. Once a person has entered the U.S. in non-immigrant status, they are Restricted, restricted to the activity or reason for which they are allowed to enter. What is considered a temporary resident? A temporary resident is a foreign national granted the right to stay in a country for a certain length of time with a visa or residence permit without full citizenship. This can this may be for study, business, or other reasons. What is temporary and permanent migration, or what is the difference between temporary migrants and immigrants? Permanent migration is when someone moves from one place to another, right, and has no plans to return to their original home. Mona siya ang immigrant immigration or immigrants 
while ang temporary migration is limited by time. This could be seasonal employment. Migrant or temporary migrant movement, immigrant is permanent residency. Migration can occur within the borders of the same country or across international borders. Immigration well, immigration occurs when a person crosses an international border and becomes a permanent residence in another country. Example to temporary immigrants is people can come to Australia for a temporary stay for a range of purpose. For example, visiting. Visiting Australia for tourism or attending a conference or for more specific purposes such as medical treatment, study, skilled work, working holidays, or other specialist activities. And it, that's all my report. I hope you understand it. Thank you. Bye. Hi, my name is Basil Jan M. Samara and my topic for today is illegal migrants and petitions for families. Illegal immigrants are drawn to places where there are economic opportunities and seek for work. However, because they enter the country illegally without proper documentation or oversee their welcome, they are viewed as breaking the law. Petition families. Family-based petitions allow for individuals in the certain countries to sponsor their family to immigrate to the United States. The Immigration and Nationality Act allows the immigration of foreigners to the United States based on a relationship to a U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident. For example, akong mother na nakadawat na siya o green card kay resident na siya sa United States. In case na ma- magkuha siya family member dire sa Pilipinas, dili na makonsider na illegal immigrant if ever maisipan na magpuyo sila dire dito sa U.S. That's it for illegal migrants and petitioned family. The next reporter will continue the discussion. Thank you. So what is refugee? According to conventional definitions, a refugee is a person who has fled their home country and cannot or will not go back because of, of valid fear of persecution. So gasik sila og safety sa laing bansa. So what is, what causes people to become refugee? People become refugees in the reason for of their religion, their political opinion, persecution based on their race, and their nationality. One of the seven largest refugee crises around the world is in Syria. Ang Syrian conflict kay nagsugod year 2011. Um, many Syrian kay nagprotest against sa ilang own country tungod sa corruption and high employment rate in response to Arab Spring uprisings in Tansha and Egypt. So, ang firm government opposition naghimo more unrest and violence resulting in a brutal conflict that grew into a protract- protracted complex, complex civil war. As a result, na economic crisis nag, nag widespread Ang poverty, mass evictions nga nag og millions of people into hunger. So, ang majority of Syrians who reside in, uh, in the surrounding nations have meager to no financial resources. 9 out of 10 um, refugees, for, for instance, now live in abject poverty in Lebanon. Many refugees' families live in cramped, small temporary housing with other refugee families. Now, the benefits and detriments for the sending country. The payment of remittances or the sending of money home is one aspect of immigration that is seen as advantages to the sending nation. This significant financial transfers from the wealthy developed country to the less developed country um less developed but developing country are frequently seen as essential to the latter's e- economic development the largest recorded remittance was 70 billion sent from india followed by 62 billion from china 
28 billion from the Philippines and 25 billion from Mexico. So, kanina mga remit remittances, gahatag or gahimo og notable contributions na development sa small, sa small and medium term industries na gatabang og generate og mga trabaho. So, where there aren't enough opportunities um, in a particular field, main drain happens. For instance, professionals may, may emigrate to developed regions of the world in search of better opportunities. So, developing countries frequently suffer greatly as a result of brain drain or the exodus of human capital. Since there might not be as many people with the same skills, to fill the void. It frequently leaves a hole that is challenging to fill. Additionally, it causes loss in tax revenue which might necess necessitate um, rising, raising taxes to make up the difference. Access to high quality resources like education and healthcare may be limited for citizens which has an impact on their quality of life. Good day everyone, I'm Karin Noel Sator and I'm going to discuss about human trafficking. Human trafficking occurs in every region of the world. Now, uh, what is human trafficking? Human trafficking is a recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of people through force, fraud, or deception with the aim of exploiting them for profit. Men, women, and children of all ages and from all backgrounds can become victims of this crime. The traffickers often use violence or fraudulent employment agencies and fake promises of education and job opportunities to trick and coerce their victims. Ang kaning human trafficking kay usually Ang nani sila gina pang istorya nga murag scam nga ilang pang ilaron ilang victims nga igno nila nga kani dali ra ka makakwarta ani na short period of time mo gina siyang pinaka common or in short ang human trafficking is a global and widespread crimes that use men women and children for profit now sa human trafficking victims are exploited by private enterprises and entrepreneurs and also, victims are sexually abused. Isa ni siya sa mga pinaka-common. It involves the use of force, fraud, or coercion to make an adult engage in commercial sex. Uh, isa po kay ang human trafficking. Kay mag, ang victims ani kay mag-work under compulsion in agricultural, mag, agricultural, manufacturing, infrastructure, and domestic activities. Now, how do human traffickers pick their victims? Traffickers are adept at identifying people with noticeable vulnerabilities or needs. They may scour specific locations such as bus stations, shelters, or local malls looking for someone with a safe place to stay or who they may be able to charm with their flattery attention. Kana sila ang mga tao nga ang mga traffickers kung tanaw nila kani nga tao murag nanginahanglan ni og murag financial support or feeling nila nga mailad nila sa ilang mga scam nga ginapang ingon nga inani nga profit in a short period of time muna sila inana ilang gapang pilion nga mga tao uh, so that's all for human trafficking the next reporter will discuss the next topic thank you hi everyone my name is Renzo Sipinyaranda and i'm here to discuss about the integration First, what is integration? Integration is an act of the immigrants to resemble the culture of the native borns of the country they have migrated in. Since migrants should be able to interact with their new home countries, there are considerable variations in economic integration which are the following. Applying for citizenship, adapting with a linguistic and ethic custom, and abiding by the policy policy changes to address integration problems. However, integration often comes into a way process. It's either the immigrant change because they ad they have to adapt, or the native born change because 
immigrants immigrants influence which on the other hand can be helped to the host nation's GDP or gross domestic products. Lack of integration increases the tension between immigrants and the migrants. In short, na ay duha ka reasons or ways para sa, integ para sa integration. First, kinahanglan nga ma-change or ma-adjust ang or mag-adjust ang immigrants sa culture o tradition o sa mga policies sa host country and the second is kinahanglan mag-change or mag-adjust ang mga natives sa immigrants nga naa sa ilang country tungod kay naay uban immigrants or migrants kay makatabang sa pag-uswag or pag-increase sa GDPs sa isa ka country in a way nga ang uban nga mga migrants na abot sa isa ka country kay naay na sila capability nga kinahanglan sa country or place like skills, talents, example ang uban nurses diri sa Pilipinas tungon kay gamay ang sweldo diri sa Pilipinas so ni migrate sila sa laing place or country so imbis nga ang Pilipinas ang mo asenso ang lain na noon so so this is how integration affected the migration the migration and I hope you understand the integration. Allow me to pass you to the next reporter. Thank you. Good day everyone. This is John K. Purpose Channel and I'm the last reporter of Group 5. So, to conclude the lesson, global migration entails globalization of people. Unlike the broader globalization process, it is an event. Some migrants experience their movements as liberating process. A highly educated professional may find moving to another country financially rewarding. At the other end, a victim of human trafficking may view the process of migration as dislocating and disempowering. Like globalization, moreover, migration produces different and often contradictory responses. On the other hand, Many richer states know that migrant labor will be beneficial for the eco economies. Despite the many contradictions, it is that various types of global interdependence will ensure that international migration or global migration remain one of the most pressing problems in the modern world. Countries like Japan, Singapore, Saudi Arabia, whose economies are wholly based on globalization and need foreign labor to keep expanding will actively recruit international employees similar to this developing and third world nation like the philippines will continue since this employee due to the abundance of labor and need for remittance and that will be the end of our report thank you for listening